Capricorn placements, how are you doing? Capricorn, let's see what we have for you. Capricorn. If you have Taurus placement, you do check out the Taurus. It's, it's kind of like upsetting my stomach. It was like a weird vibe. At least the second message was. Anyway, Capricorn, I'm doing readings back to back. So that's why I'm kind of a little complaining. Kind of still complaining about the energy that I just fucking tapped into. for me, for you, for everyone that is watching. <sighs> Capricorn. Let's see. You have someone here that is in love with you, but they don't really know what that means. Which is weird, right? Like, what, what, does, what does love mean? Right? Loving someone, yes. But what does love mean? Spending time with them, yes. But what does love mean? It's like, the, it's like this person is fucking overthinking their love for you. It's like, yes, I want to be with Capricorn. I want to be with them. I want to spend time with them. I want to marry them. I want to have babies. I want to have, like, the whole thing. The family, the fence, the, the, the garden, the, the country flag, whatever. <laughs> whatever, you know, could be, like, the American dream, right? But it's like... <sighs> but they don't really know what that means. For example, if they know they know what suppose they know what they want to happen, but they don't know what love means, which is really weird. I don't really have I don't really know how to explain it. Maybe this person never felt love like they feel it for you, and they're trying to make sense of something that is so deep on an emotional level. But they're trying to make sense of it on a logical level. And this, I like this mistake, I see a lot of people do. A lot. A lot, a lot. Where people try to make sense of deep emotions logically. You cannot make logic or you cannot logicalize your emotions. The amount of times I've said that for readings. <laughs> I should put that on a t-shirt. You cannot logicalize your emotions especially when they are deep and the deeper they go the less logical they are and it's meant to be like that because feelings are felt thoughts are thought thoughts are thought <laughs> but this person is trying to make sense of their emotions for you because of how intense and strong their emotions for you are. Okay, who is this lovey-dovey? Wow. Wow. See, when I say this person is in love with you, it's no joke. Do you see? Do you see the depth of this person's love for you? They want it all with you. They want the love, the, the life, the family, the kids. They want it all. They want that future with you, Capricorn. And when people want this with someone, it can be really confusing on an emotional level. Because like I said, people try to make sense of their emotions instead of feel their emotions. 
the attraction that this person has for you. The attraction that this person has towards you. Like this, this is the type of person that loves you inside out. That loves you sideways from the top to the bottom and from the bottom to the top. <laughs> Um, we have the King of Cups confirming this at the bottom of the deck. So when I say this person is in love with you, they are madly in love with you. And when I say madly, yeah, it's not that great. Because this person is going mad because of, because of their love for you. So it's, 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 it's overwhelming. They could be stuttering because I had a moment and I'm in their energy. So it, 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 this person could come across as nervous or like they forget to breathe when you are near them. I just heard something which is kind of weird and cute at the same time. If you have been intimate with this person, this person thinks about their breath. <laughs> they could maybe like have thoughts like they're so self-conscious, conscious, conscious. They are so self-conscious when, <clears throat> for example, if you are with this person and you're face to face having a conversation, they could be thinking about their, <clears throat> maybe they don't want me to say it because every time I want to say it, my throat blocks. My throat, my throat just closes. <laughs> but I heard it. Hey, it's okay. It's okay. It's kind of endearing. They could be like thinking about uh, if their breath stinks when you are close to them or having conversation with them. And in their head, they're having that conversation. And while they're talking, they're thinking, oh shit, does, that, does, some, does my breath stink? <laughs> I know it's random, but you know, sometimes we have these thoughts, right? Like, oh my God, this, this, is, is my breath bad? Kind of thing. That's how, that's how, that's how much of an overthinker they are. I have to literally like take deep breaths while I am when, in this person's energy. If you, if you, <laughs> my cat is sleeping in a, <laughs> in a really cute position and she's like looking at me, but in eyes closed. I don't know if that's a good replica. <laughs> oh my God. Why did that distract me? If you are near this person, they really think about how they come across to you. They really think about how you see them. Like literally, this person could be imagining what you are looking at when you see them. Do you know what I mean? Only an overthinker does that. And because I am an overthinker, I totally fucking relate. Like sometimes, I will have an interaction with a person and then when I go home, I will replay that interaction in my head, but from their point of view. <laughs> that's what over, that's what overthinkers does, do, I mean. This person is definitely an overthinker. And I think the reason why, maybe they are not naturally an overthinker, but for you they are. When you love someone that much, yeah, you will overthink everything. Like, at least 20 times before you leave it alone. Maybe more depending on how obsessive the person is. But, you know, let me say something, Capricorn. In their defense, this means that they really, really, really like you. There is definitely strong feelings here <sighs> like really strong they can pass out because like 
I feel like I'm doing breathing manually during uh, tapping into their energy because it's it feels like <sighs> it's like you know when you have like a dry mouth but you also feel like you're about to puke because you're like nervous around your crush or around someone you really 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 like yeah and if <laughs> and they're thinking of their breath stinks or how how my face looks like when capricorn is looking at me are are my eyes crossed do i look creepy did i blink the last minute <laughs> Did I have something in my teeth? Oh my god. Why did why did Capricorn make that face when I said that? Is there is that their disgusting a disgusted face? Is that their is that their confused face? Have I offended Capricorn? And the and the thoughts go on. Do you get the point now? Because I think I made I've made a point here. <sighs> Damn, this person, damn, they are really, they are really, uh, like, very critical of themselves around you. And even if, if it's not around you, they could be doing that when they leave the interaction with you. Maybe they, they come across as really, as really, like, normal, let's say. But what's happening inside of them is definitely not normal. It's definitely abnormal or overdone, which means overthinking. I get this person. I get this person because I am like that, especially when it comes to interactions that mean a lot to me or I want to come across as someone that is... Um, you know, like for a job, for example, or I remember, <laughs> I remember doing this kind of shit for interviews or like when I'm around my crush. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I will still come across as awkward as fuck because my thoughts will run wild and I'll be like, fuck, I hope they didn't notice. And sometimes people will not notice my awkwardness and will think it's normal. But sometimes I will like stutter or like I will say something and <laughs> the sentence will sound like, huh? Doesn't it, it doesn't make sense. Anyways, I relate to this person. I kind of feel sorry for them because, you know, it's not really their fault how much they love you. It's your fault. It's your fault. You made, you made them love you this much. Why did you make them love you this much? <laughs> Poor little thing. Let's continue. You know what? I want to see how you feel about them, Capricorn. Because I can clearly, clearly see how they feel about you. Let me see you. The usual business. Business as usual. The usual business. I meant to say business as usual. <laughs> uh, okay. So, I don't know. Crosswatcher, if this is you, close your ears because this is going to hurt. And I, and I don't want to hurt you. The Capricorn, I see that you see them as a friend. And you might have possibly friend zoned this person. There is no sexual attraction whatsoever. You know, here's the thing this person could be your secret admirer, meaning that they have a huge crush on you, which involves feelings, but you have no fucking clue. You see them as a friend. You didn't even think of them that way. 
You didn't even, you didn't even, you didn't even let that idea cross your head. Uh, why is it always you, Capricorn, where I have to mention that it's a, it's a workplace situation? Why? I mean, I know you are stereotyped by, you know, just working your life away. But seriously, every time I, I try to, like, I did, I'm not trying to make this about work. But this can give, like, this can either give me, like, a, a workplace <clears throat> or a friend group. And I feel like it's more of a workplace than a friend group. Because you see this person in a way where it feels very platonic. Like, as if it was a workplace. Do you see what I mean? Like, even with friends, there is a bit of flirting or, you know, like, hey, hey, you know, like, ha ha, you know, go get this person or go get this girl, go get this guy. You know, like complimenting each other or like trying to kind of boost each other up. But none of that is here. This is why I feel like it's more of a workplace where it's like, good morning, Susie. Good morning, Mark. I don't know where these names came from, but I just, it just came through. You know, it feels like that. It feels like, well, I will see you on Monday. Yes, see you on Monday. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck was that. <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> oh, don't make me laugh too hard. <sighs> so, you don't really see this person as more than a person you know. And it's like so harsh compared to how they feel about you. So fucking harsh, like so harsh. <laughs> If, if there's a cross watcher watching this, I'm sorry, baby. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for you. Because, um, yeah. Yeah, that's tough, right? It's tough to hear. Like, can you imagine? You are in love with someone. You have the ten of, ten of cups, ten of pentacles. You are so in love with them. And then their feelings for you are like, I didn't even think of you sexually. I see you as a friend and nothing else. Yeah, that hurts. <laughs> this is like the worst type of rejection. Maybe, you know, I, I do, I do think, I personally think that friend zoning someone, especially when you know the person has a crush on you, or maybe you don't know, but friend zoning someone is worse than a rejection like if you say no I'm not interested is better than saying oh no I don't see you like that you are like my sister or my brother but we can be friends because when you are friends with someone that is into you it's like a fucking torture being around them right so it's like it complicates things and it's it's bad for the person that is friend zoned. And like, uh, trust me, I know because I mean, even if you are, even if, it, especially if you are empathetic, for example, like when you friend zone someone and you are empathetic, you can see it, sense it, feel the person. And it's, it's a burden because you know they want something with you and you are not interested. It's, it hurts them. And if you are empathetic, you will, you will feel bad. So it's better to reject someone and be like, no, <clears throat> no friendship, no interest, none of that. Is better than friend zoning someone, in my opinion. 
First of all, you stop the torture. Second of all, you stop the obsession. They can finally move on and heal from you when you reject someone. But if you keep them as friends, especially if you know that they are into you, it's, it's, don't do that. It's torture. And let me tell you, there is karma for that. Because there is, it's especially if you get in a relationship and you have someone that is a friend, that you have friend zoned, the, the karma, the karma, the negative energy that goes your way, even if they don't mean it, even if, the, if it's unintentional, even if it's just like harmless jealousy, it's, it's jealousy is never harmless, by the way. It doesn't matter if it's a lover, a friend, they have to go. So, oh man, this is, this is like a pickle, not for you, but for them. And it could be a pickle for you because you don't want to hurt someone that you consider a friend, right? So, but you know, I get it if this is a work situation because you are not going to quit your job just because someone likes you, has a crush on you. Really? You know what I mean? So if this is a work situation, I see you taking this as platonic as possible, especially from your end, Capricorn. And this person that is like head over heels for you, well, I mean, I don't know. Will there some? <coughs> will there? Will there like be like a discussion, a talk between the two of you, where you clarify these things in regards to each other? Now this card almost fell, so I I want to pull more. Nope, nope. We have two no's and one yes. Wow. Shit. <laughs> Capricorn, do not fucking get drunk around this person. Just saying. Do not get do not get drunk around this person. If you and if you don't drink, I get I get that, you know, not a lot of people not not everyone drinks, right? Religious reasons, personal reasons, whatever. But I feel like there will be a moment of weakness. Where, there's, where this person will be there for you. And because you are not in a good spot or in the moment of weakness, this person will make a move on you or they will make a move towards you and you will engage. Which means that there's something sexual that will happen between the two of you because you had a weak moment. And when I say a weak moment, it feels like you will be drinking and drunk and you don't know what the fuck you're doing. And then you wake up next to this person and you're like, fuck, fuck, I've had too much to drink. Or if it doesn't involve alcohol, you could be in a, in a lonely kind of time or a depressive time, or maybe you were like, really in a bad mood or you've gone through something that is emotionally draining and this person is like i'm here to help and then you will see it as an opportunity they will see it as an opportunity to get sexual with you so they will make a move on you and because you you are not it feels it feels like they will take advantage of you let's just put it that way they will take advantage of you. They will recognize that you are in a vulnerable spot and they will fucking take advantage of it, which I'm not a fan of. Like, who does that? It's really, it's, it's, it sucks that people do that, but it happens all the time. Because this, this person has a huge, massive crush. They are in love with you and you don't see them at all like that. And this person in their, I don't want to even say in their defense, 
this person will see the opportunity where you are vulnerable and maybe you are drunk or maybe you are emotionally not stable, whatever, something happened to you. And they will be like, I'm going to make a move. And that's when they will make a move. You will react. What I mean by react is respond to it and kind of go with it. But then when you kind of like sober up or, you know, get back to your senses, you will be like, what the fuck? Yeah. I do see that you will set the record straight, meaning when you get back to your senses, you will tell this person, look, nothing happened. I'm not doing this again. This was a mistake. And they will be like, Oh yeah, sure. Yes, it, it was a mistake. But they will do it again if you become vulnerable again. That is how a situation ship gets created. One is really interested, the other one is not. And this person will be there whenever you feel weak or drunk or lonely. And then you will regret it. And then tell them, look, it's never happening again. And then they're like, yeah, sure. And they wait for the next time you get vulnerable and weak and whatever else. Situation ship. you another message I mean Capricorn if you obviously the, the advice is is obvious right do not keep this person close to you because when you are vulnerable this person will take advantage of you and that is not cool I don't care if they love you or not the fact that this person will take advantage of you Especially when you are vulnerable. Big red flag. Huge red flag. So that is the advice. Do not get this person close to you. In, in my opinion, if they are a friend, you should not have them as a friend from, from the get-go. It's like no friendship. It's a no. Ghost this person, whatever. But if you work with this person, keep it professional. Do not go out with this person just because we are just because we are co-workers, we are colleagues, doesn't mean that we have to go out. Okay? I have lost a ton of sweat today at the gym and I've been drinking and drinking and drinking water. See, I just drank so much, but my mouth is still like dry. <sighs> okay, we will do you a second message. I'm just taking my time because I'm doing like long readings. <sighs> Let's see. Let's see, Capricorn. Let's get you another message. Another message, please. Your first message was it started really well, but then it got creepy towards the end. I think anyway. Like I don't know. We talked about that enough now. Th almost thirty minutes. Let's see, another message for Capricorn, please. <clears throat> Which one? Mm. 
Wow. You have an ex here that wants the reconciliation. This person thinks that they... This person thinks that you owe them. You owe them time, possibly even money. If this, if this is a relationship where you had like shared assets or you had shared investments, joint account, it feels like this person wants their share. You, like it feels like even if it's not like money, it feels like things. For example, you, you could have like, I don't know, like this split the bill on buying the furniture or buying the TV. And they're like, well, you know, Capricorn, you have my things. I paid for half of that. So this person feels entitled to you. And I feel like they don't really want the things that they paid for. It's like they're using that as a way to tell you that the reason why I let you have these things and not ask for them back or not ask for the, for you to sell them and give me my half is because I expect to be back. <laughs> I mean, I mean, they have they have the nerve. They have like the confidence as well. But you know, I don't really feel because I'm looking into this person's energy, it looks like sneaky. But what this person is going to try to do with you is to try to heal things with you and reconcile with you. Because they're like, I put so much effort and money into this and energy into this. They have, they have like high hopes that you will be back together. Like, they think it will happen. Possibly they think it's going to happen 90%. I want to say 100%, but I'm just trying to give them, like, I'm just trying to make them sound even more reasonable and say 90%. But maybe this person even thinks, I am 100% getting back with Capricorn. So this is an ex that is refusing to let you go. Doesn't matter what you want. We belong together. Okay? It kind of feels like that. I do see that the attraction here is strong. And I don't know if it's one-sided from this person alone. Or if it's you as well. In fact, let's jump to your feelings here. I want to see how you feel about this person. In, fa oh, in, in fact, I'm going to take that to the extended. So I want to see your feelings and see why this person thinks that it's 100% or 90% that you two will be back together. The extended link will be in the description box. I will see you there.